Ah, you have the word khata. These are all different things. For the most part, the translator, the way that he deals with all these words is he translates all of them as sin. But the truth is, they're not the same word and have different derivations from an etymological perspective in Arabic language. So, for example, a famous hadith of the um, Prophet Muhammad is that Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayr al-khatta'ina tawabun That all human beings are sinners, quote unquote, and the best of those who sin are those who come back and repent. But the word here is khata. Khata doesn't actually mean sin, it actually means mistake. A khata is a mistake. Now, the word them, which is mentioned in chapter 40 and is also mentioned in chapter 48, which is what you cited, it comes from the Arabic root word dhanaba. Dhanaba is actually a tail of an animal, okay? This is the derivation of the word. Now, the tail of an, if you look at how an animal behaves, it's quite shy of its own tail. Like the word khati and khata, the word dhanab or dhamb, really it means a mistake. It doesn't mean a ma'asiyah. You'll, you'll note, therefore, the Quran does say, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ It tells the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to uh, make istighfar or seek forgiveness through istighfar, but it never tells him to do tawbah. There is not a verse in the Quran which asks the Prophet Muhammad tub. It doesn't, this two words, uh, these two letters, in the imperative tub does not exist in the Quran. Tawbah, in the, tawbah comes after ma'asiyah happens. Now ma'asiyah is the, the sin, okay, which someone commits, which is requiring a repentance. Because tawbah means repentance. Istighfar can happen without repentance. Do you see the difference? So tawbah, one of the conditions of it is you have to have nadam, you have to have regret, you have to, but uh, istighfar, you don't even need to do anything wrong. I'll give you an example. It, we are told as Muslims, after we pray, we're praying, we're doing a good deed. We're told to say istighfar three times. Astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma enta salam, wa minka salam, tabarakta. This is a dua, a supplication. We've just prayed, why are we doing istighfar? Why? Because Istighfar dua is meant to cover it. So istighfar, or the word istighfar from ghafara, okay, istighfara is the uh, talab, which means you are doing, you are asking for a kind of forgiveness from mistakes, not from sins like masiya. It's not the same as tawbah. So the point is stands. We believe that all the prophets, uh, all the prophets are infallible in the sense that they don't commit sins. However, we do believe. And this is something which would maybe differentiate us, maybe it won't actually, that all the prophets can fall into a mistake. Believe, yes, they can fall into a mistake. So, can I just say? So, so the istighfar happens as a result of not making. And when Aisha in the hadith of Bukhari, she asked the prophet, Allah has forgiven all your sins, why are you making istighfar? Which is exactly what it's meant to in the verse. The Prophet said, Should I not be a Abdan Shakura? Should I not be a thankful slave? So it shows you that istighfar is actually linked to gratitude as well. So the point I make it to is it's not a good enough evidence to use. You'd have to bring a verse in the Quran which asks the Prophet to make tawbah. Is there a verse that you come okay. that you know about that? Okay, so what I see is a connection between um, for example, when you look at the hadith, you see that he engaged in killings. Um, and there were some things that happened, as we see in the hadith, that you would say, wait a minute, there is potential... Have you got any specific examples? Okay. So... Okay. Has that answered your question? Because the initial question that he brought was a verse in Surah Ghafir, and we've got the same kind of verse in Surah Al-Fatih, okay. which is that, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِي ذَنْبِكَ You know, which is, do istighfar. So I, what I've done is I tried to delineate the difference between an istighfar and a tawbah. One of them, tawbah, is done specifically after someone sins. Istighfar is not necessarily the case that you do it after someone actually does a sin. I gave the example of the prayer, that we do a prayer, but we told after the prayer, which is a good deed, that we're asked to do istighfar, just in case you've made a mistake. So that there's a difference here between what and what? Mistakes and sins. And we're saying, look, we're saying that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu can make a mistake, like for example, wa Tawalla, you know, uh, the, when the blind man came to him, chapter 8 of the Quran, but it's different to making a sin. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. good. No, it does, it does. But I want, I, want, I want you to make, I know, like, I think, I think you're one of the more, out of you know, a number of people I've spoken to, I think you're going to say it as it is. But I don't know how you're going to do today. I don't know. All I can do is ask you. 
So my question, my, 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 my question is, is when you compare Muhammad, when you compare Muhammad to Jesus, okay. in what sense? In what, in what? Faults, faults, shortcomings, okay. faults, mistakes. Okay. Who is flawless? Just be honest. Jesus or Muhammad? We believe both. That's why we started off by saying oh, that this is okay, a false so dichotomy. Do you? Because I have a verse. Okay. Where I believe that you know the Bible talks about the wages of sin is death. Sorry. The wages of sin is death. Okay. So the more that you make these mistakes, these faults, these errors, there is there is a repercussion for it, which is which is hell. Okay. Can and I so, ask so, you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you sure, talk. I'll sure. Let you talk. So when I read, for example, Surah 46, verse 9, I think you know this one. This is... Surah so Al-Qaf. Exactly, you know this one. Say, I am not the first messenger I ever sent, nor do I know whatever yeah. happened to me or you. Yeah. I only follow what is revealed to me, yeah. and I am yeah. only sent with a clear warning. Yeah. So, when you look at the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth... Okay, so what's that trying to prove? So this is proving that... If he lived a faultless life, okay. if he lived a life without shortcomings, okay. he would know where he's going. Oh, okay. So he, wait, I'll let you, I'll let you elaborate. He will know where he's going. He will know that he's going to Jan. Oh, okay. But he's saying there's ambiguity with this question. No, no, no. But, 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 but I'll, let you, I'll let you respond. I'll let you, I'll let you respond. But I, I, I still want you, bro, to be like super crystal clear and be intellectually honest about about when you look at the flaws and the faults from the mouth of Allah. Who is faultless? No, but you've made you've made this point, but you've not shown any evidence. So no, no, let's go. No, let's no, go no, back to the point. It's a question. It's a question. Yeah. One chance. Okay. One chance. Say, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad, Allah, as you know, in Surah 48, verse 2. Okay. Surah 47, 45. as yeah. well. And so Surah Muhammad. 40. Okay. Has said. We've just that, mentioned this, though. No, I know. I know. But I don't think. So what I'm trying to get is that if you look at the mouth of Allah, the words of Allah, He said Muhammad has sinned. But he doesn't no, no, say. We, wait, hold on. He doesn't we've just say explained this, this though. Isn't it? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So he doesn't say the same for Isa. He doesn't say that the, uh, Muhammad is a sinner in these verses. He doesn't say that. No, he asks him to repent. No, he doesn't ask him to repent. He repent? doesn't ask him to repent. Let's no, he doesn't. No, I, I told you. Let, 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 hold on a second. Uh, that means you haven't understood me. With respect. No, no, no. I understand no, no, what you're saying. You're no, saying no, no. Give me a second. Give me a, like se give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. That's what you're saying. Give me a second. The verses in question in chapter 48, in chapter 47, and in chapter 40, Surah Ghafir, Surah Muhammad, and Surah Al Fatih. All these three verses, none of those verses, where it says the same thing essentially, was taqfir li dhambika. Yeah, it, nowhere in that construction in the Arabic language does it ask the Prophet to repent. The word repentance in Arabic is tawbah, okay? In that, in the imperative form is tub, for one person. Tubu, for many people. Tuba, for two people. Tubna, for the woman. This does not exist for the Prophet Muhammad. That's number one. Doesn't exist. So what about well, hold on. Translations no, as I say, but, I'm, let, I'm me, let me let you finish. Okay, so, English translations depend on people like me. So what does that mean? it means like, in other words, you're dependent on someone to translate the Arabic in English. I'm doing it for you firsthand. I'm showing you every every construction. Well, there's a scholarly system. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but it's fine. It's no problem. I'm just telling you. Okay. Number one. Number two is this. Nowhere in the Quran, and I've been, I will challenge you. Does it ask the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to repent? It doesn't ask him. Tubu does not or tub, tub does not exist to the Prophet. Tub is different for istighfar, as we mentioned before. Tawbah is repentance. Istaghfir is more generic and it includes uh, things that you've done that was not even bad. Okay, okay. number one. No number two now, there's no way you're going to find anything. Trust me. No problem. That's number two. I no, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Number two, number two. That's, that is the benefit of memorizing a holy book. No, it is. I mean, I don't have to. I know it doesn't exist. No I'll put my neck on that. If you find me a verse, I'll become a Christian today. Are you sure? How about that? Yeah. Oh. Find me a verse. Where it tells the Prophet Muhammad to do to yeah, excellent. Where it tells the Prophet Muhammad to, give it to do Tawbah and I'll become Christian, I'll say that uh, whatever you want me to say. But I know it doesn't exist because I've memorized every verse of the book. And I would have known that when I was memorizing it. It doesn't exist. 
Number one. Number two is this. Okay, number two. We started off this discussion by saying that actually, and I think we kind of came to an agreement, that if we look at virtues, yeah, how do we know if something is virtuous or not? Everything goes back to the attributes of God. God is loving, God is compassionate. God. And we said that even in secular ethics, like the Nicomachean ethics, etc., Aristotle wrote this book about virtues. So let's take some of the virtues which are cardinal virtues and let's see if it applies to Prophet Muhammad or not. Would you agree with me that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to war? Would you agree with that? Did he go to war? He went to war. He went to, would you agree with that or not? It's a statement of fact. He went to war, but okay. I, I don't want no, us to digress. No, no, no but, but hold on. When, did he, is there any report of the Prophet running away in the war? No. No. No, there isn't. Okay. So th there's no report of him running away in war. He went to war. Would you agree with me? Or would you agree with me that that indicates bravery or not? It depends. It depends. On okay, someone context. fighting on the front line. Be a war. So this is the thing. Does it show bravery or not? So in the context of a perfect God who doesn't want to see people die. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. I'm talking about bravery. I would say. I would say. Okay, bravery. Yeah, bravery. Someone yes, standing there in the battlefield, irrespective of. Yeah, it's yeah. a legitimate war. And yeah. Religion. Yes. Okay, excellent. However, Beautiful. However, Beautiful. However, your version of Jesus, does he excuse however, me? Your version of Jesus, your version of Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me give you your version of your version of your version of Jesus. Hold on, hold on, please. Allow me, allow me. Your version of your version of allow me. Allow me, just ask a question. Your your version of Jesus according to Ibn al Qayyim al Jawziyyah, we said first of all, bravery is seen as one of the cardinal, one of the main virtues, even before Islam, before Christianity, virtue ethics. Okay, no problem. Bravery, so important. In fact, Aristotle said, without bravery, bravery is a prerequisite for all other virtues because you won't be able to do them. Okay, so bravery is a virtue. I'm saying that in the Hadith literature, according to Ibn al-Qayyim, the Prophet went to 19 different wars. It's usually used as an example against Islam. But no, hold on, let me, let me finish, let me finish. He went to 19 different wars in a span of 10 years. That's an equivalent of two a year. And in none of those reports, there is not a single report that says he ever ran away from the battlefield, that he ever faltered, or he was always in the front lines. Okay. What exhibits more bravery? The Hadith reports about the Prophet I'm going to war 19 times in 20 years, or the reports about Jesus Christ, which doesn't have any such thing at all. Which of the two can you make more of a case of bravery for? In your, in your Bible about Jesus, or in our, uh, the Hadith about the Prophet Answer the question. I want to read a verse, but I'm going to answer your question. It is more noble and brave. I'm not, I'm not, no, brave, 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 brave. No, brave, brave, brave. brave. It's brave. Yeah. I'm not saying you should do it. Brave. To turn the other cheek. Okay. Bra okay, no, that's... No, no, but let's okay. yeah. So, like, so say for yeah. example, okay. you may have some grudges. I, dis I disagree. Okay. You may have some... What's bravery? Have define it. How do you have a progressive... Define society? bravery. How do you have a progressive society if you're fighting all the time? I'm not talking about progressive. No. I'm talking about bravery. No, bravery I'm only talking about bravery. In the context of fighting. Yeah, yeah sure. But hey, you said you said you said this. I mean. You said that it's more brave for someone to turn the other cheek. And forgive. How do you define bravery? Because for me, bravery is when you have, for example, fear or anxiety, but you overcome that by doing an action. By turning the other cheek, you're not actually exhibiting any level of bravery. You're, you're basically giving up in a fight. Are you telling me those no. people who, who curl up in a ball and the other guy's punching them, they're showing bravery? No, no, no we see, don't accept so that. It might, it, so when That's you, not, that, no, so hold on. So, if someone's, so, so excuse war, me, excuse me, excuse me. War, let, me just, let, let me finish, let me finish. Okay. But you've got to let me come back in. Hold on. Your version of bravery is not in line with any modern or classical definition. Let me tell you why. I you can disagree with it all you like. I'm saying that there's no modern or classical definition which explains. Excuse me. There is no modern. Me right. Let me finish. Let's, there's let's no modern or classical definition going back to the Hellenistic period, the pre-Socratic period, up until our times, that indicates that bravery is turning the other cheek, meaning that someone has assaulted you and you allow them to assault you more. Like for example. If I was in a house now, because that leads to pacifism, frankly, no, it leads you, to pacifism. You're okay, then, then you're okay with an eye for an eye and a two for two. That's, that's your foreign policy. That's what you believe. Yeah, that's in the Bible, right? Yeah, but, no, but that's not something. So is that wrong in no, the Bible? In the New Testament, we know that. So Christ, in the Bible, that's wrong. You know the, the Old story. Testament is wrong. You know the story. Is the, is, is the Bible wrong? Peter struck the guards. But is the Bible wrong? And Jesus healed the air. Is it wrong, the Bible? 
Yeah. An eye for an eye, is that wrong? That's, no, it's not. It's for fielding Christ. Oh, can I ask you a question? If, no, no, no. no I'm, same thing. I'm not, I'm not changing anything. I'm asking you, I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Can I ask a question? Ask a question. Can I ask a question? This is Hajjah. If, 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 can I ask you a question? Listen, can I ask can you a question? I don't mind what question you ask. Alright, just... read your verse first. Okay. Okay. No, no, I'm good. Thank you very much. So Alright, I'll take this. I won't say no. Can you speak louder if you don't mind? Because they've got so much be... semantics going on there. No, it's so noisy. So, I know. Like, I don't mind, please. I can't compare to you. A bit louder. Well, well, I understand it. But anyway, okay, I'll try, I'll try. Thank you. Alright, so, when we look, right, at what you were saying, because you said that, show me a verse that Allah is saying to Muhammad to repent. Yeah. I found it. Okay, go and get it. With the word tub. You want the tub, man. But I've got the English. That's what the word tawbah means. These guys, legacy.quran. Okay, no problem. This is, get these, it. Are, these are scholars. No problem. These are scholars. Yeah. Yeah. Look what it says, guys. In what verse? Surah uh, 47, ayah 19. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's a, a stuff okay, for Okay, let me just read stuff English. For let me read English. Okay. It's okay, it's okay, man. It's all right. But the Arabic, the Quran's in Arabic. Okay. No way, it's all right, bro. It's, 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 okay. No way, don't worry. Right. I'm here, man. I'm here. I'm here. All right. So look, so look what it says. So know, O Muhammad, that there is no deity except Allah. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay, it's alright. It's alright. And ask forgiveness okay. for your sin. Okay. Okay. And for the believing men and women and Allah knows of your movement okay. and your rest. Does that say does that say repent? Of course. Where does it say repent? What does repent mean? No, no. Don't say what does it you said repent. Where does it say repent? That Even in repent. English, you just read it out. That the word repent didn't come into play. Ask for forgiveness. Yes, I'm not asking you to know Arabic. I'm asking you to know English. Where does it say repent there? This is it, brother. Ask okay. for forgiveness. Okay, look, we've already mentioned these verses. Okay. I, in the beginning, I told you what? Chapter I, 40, I 47, 48. I, I know, this was Sakhfali Zambika. It comes in only three places in the Quran. It comes in Surah Al-Khaf. It comes in Surah Muhammad. It comes in Surah Al-Fatih. I've already explained. And it's the same construction in all three of them. Okay. And we've already had the whole so, discussion so about why it. why does the English say otherwise? Listen, it doesn't say repent in that. No, but these are scholars. Okay. You, you, do you, are you here to teach or learn? No, okay. Are you here to teach or learn? No, no. no I hear what you're saying. Okay, yeah. And I, I, to a degree, yeah. right, I'm respecting to a degree what you're saying. Okay, so. You're, you're, say, you're saying you're coming from a place of knowledge. Okay, so I'm not trying to undermine you in any way. But when I okay. look at Mushin Khan... It doesn't say repent though. It doesn't say repent. <laughs> He says, forget and, and ask forgiveness for your sin. But what does that mean, ask for forgiveness? It's not repentance. I'm explaining to you that the word repentance in Arabic is a completely different word with different connotations, different denotations, different etymology, different uh, hist hist history. Okay. So okay. we've already explained that. That's number one. Okay. Number two, so what we said now is, let's take the virtues one by one. Let's take the virtues one. We, is it fair for me to say there is more evidence in the Sirah Nabawiyyah of the life of the Prophet okay, the that he ex exhibits this cardinal virtue of bravery that exists in the New Testament about your version of Jesus Christ. Is that I, fair? I disagree. Okay, well, the only thing you can bring, the only thing you can bring to, to challenge 19 wars, being in the front line all the time. Well, hold on. The only thing you could bring was turn the other cheek. I explained to you that turn the other cheek love. is not... No, love is a different thing. No. It's a different category. It's not bravery, is it? Man, come on! It's a different thing. Who, who, who defines bravery as love? Give me one scholar. Okay, when does it stop? When does the fighting stop? It's a different. Without love, okay. turning okay. our okay. When does you're, it stop? You're, you're, it excuse stop excuse me. Uh, Godhead, is, if that's your name. What I'm saying to you is, we're taking virtue for virtue. Okay, let's okay. go to another virtue now. Let's I'm, go to another. I'm let's, surprised. Let's go. You're, you're, you're okay, brave. let's go. To, let's brave, let's go to another virtue. You're, you're brave let's to go to another. Try to compare Muhammad to Jesus. We, we've done it now, but and go ahead, it seems to me that your version of Jesus is losing. The it's one nil right now. Okay, give me. Okay, five well, years, let's bro. try. Let's try. Five let's try years. again. Let's try again. Your version of Jesus in the New Testament. Give me the most brave thing that he's done. The crucifixion. Your version of Jesus in the. What's yeah, the brave about it? Wait, so What's you brave mean about to say, it? You mean to say him being killed? Wait, hold on, hold on. Him, him hold saying, Eli, Eli, let us back to me. God, God, why wait, have you wait, wait. forsaken me? Wait, wait, Begging, God, wait, excuse me. God, wait, wait, crucifixion. Wait, wait, God, uh, Jesus, no, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold so on, no, hold on. No, let me, let me. Father, save me. Someone who's innocent. Father, save me. That gets murdered. How is that brave? Brave to even say this. I mean, how is it brave? People are going to be watching and think, oh, no, no, how is no, that brave? No empathy. Not, Everything how is it brave? He was forced into the crucifixion according to that narrative. Love. According to that narrative, there was nothing that he done. 
he was forced into a punishment. Okay, that doesn't indicate bravery. Doesn't. The Bible says that he. Try again. He says he's the. Try again. He says he's the good shepherd. Try again. Psalms 23. Okay, what's that got to do with bravery? So it means that. What's that got to do with bravery? But he's basically saying, right, that he lays down his life for his sheep. Okay. 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 There's nothing. So here. There's nothing. Is that more beautiful? No, no, no. That's now. That's into fighting. Fighting. No, no. Okay, so we are talking about historical. We are talking about historical acts, all right? Things that you're talking about, for example, the resurrection. Number one. Number two, it doesn't even indicate bravery. Number two, I'm saying to you right now, he wanted to do this game himself. He started off by telling, excuse me, he started off by saying, he did it. He said, let's look at Muhammad. Let's look at Jesus. Let's do a comparison. I'm saying, look, with all due respect, we believe both of them are infallible. We believe both of them are perfect. We, yeah, we believe. Now, then we came to the point, I said, even if you look at your New Testament, if you look at your New Testament, you'll find that if you apply virtue ethics criterion to both men, you will find that according to our reports, Muhammad sallam, fares better than your narrative of Jesus. So we started with bravery. We explained that 19 wars, being on the front line, telling other people to come and fight, all this kind of thing is more of a proof of bravery than anything in the New Testament about Jesus. Really? That's number one. Really? Number two, yeah, if you, you sure? with anything, with anything, well, hold on, hold on. With anything, so excuse me. With anything, uh, Godhead, with any, no, hold on, with anything, with anything that comes close to a semblance of a definition of the word bravery, classically or contemporaneously, number one. Number two, let's go to magnanimity, forgiveness. It's one of the cardinal virtues yeah, mentioned in the, okay, sure. Okay. But allow me to talk though, No, hold on, hold on. Talking, we're talking about hold on. forgiveness. Yeah? Forgiveness, okay. forgiveness. I know you might be thinking, how, how could you go there? I'm, huh? I'm how, okay, okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you. Someone who's in a position of power and decides not to manifest the power versus someone who's not in a position of power, which of the two models indicates more forgiveness? I didn't even hear your question, sorry. Okay, let me ask the question again. So someone who has political power, someone who can kill, like for example, I had a gun and I, so mercy and forgiveness, I'm going to put both of them. If, if I could kill you and you couldn't kill me, let me, let me say for, no, okay. Well, yeah. You've got a prison guard and a prison. You've got a prison guard and a prisoner. Are you with me? Listen, listen to this, yeah? You've got a prison guard and a prisoner, yeah? You've got whom and whom? Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Who do you have? A prison guard and whom? A prisoner. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm here. So imagine someone now, this is, imagine someone's in Scrubs Lane Prison up here, yeah? Yeah, Okay. Someone's in Scrubs, he's a prisoner. He is a what? He is a prisoner. The prison guard comes in, okay? And he, and he says, look, come with me. Sorry to say, yeah. just grabs him like this, yeah? The prisoner says this. He turns around to the prison guard and guess what he says? He says, you know what? You touch me like that. Today I'm going to have mercy on you. Exhibit A. Okay, are you listening to me? Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Now the prison guard, are you with me? Yeah, 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 listen. The prison guard sees the prisoner acting in a certain manner. Yeah. Huh? And he says, look, I was going to put you in solitary confinement but I'm deciding to wave that off. Which of the two examples is more of an indication of mercy and forgiveness? A or B? Prison guard. Why? Prison guard. Why Why the prison guard? Because he has what? He has, the power. He has power. Okay. So Prophet Muhammad had what? Jesus had power in the New Testament? No. So, no, he didn't have uh, political power. He wasn't, uh, he didn't have political power. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. What, in, what indicates, I'm asking a question, what indicates more higher level forgiveness? Let me, let me finish, but let me finish. I'm saying that the Prophet Muhammad, when he went to Mecca, and he said, I forgive the people. Find me an equivalent of that in the New Testament about Jesus. Go ahead. Can you? Okay. Find it. What's the, give me the specific question. Find it. Give me the specific question. Uh, okay, and let me ask again. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a hundred thousand people and he was marching from Medina to Mecca and he could have destroyed and annihilated every single person in Mecca and he didn't. And he forgave the people and he said, I, I forgive you today. Give me an equivalent of when in your New Testament narrative Jesus ever did that. So we can establish magnanimity for Jesus Christ. That's higher than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to your narrative. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Because we're taking each virtue at a time. We start, we start with bravery, there's no, there's no competition. Well, now we're going to what? Okay. Forgiveness and mercy. There's no what? No I'm competition. Apparent, yeah. It looks like it's going to be a very bad defeat. A mauling, actually. You shouldn't have started this. You shouldn't have started this.
Well, I should not fight. Actually, two or three because we've got Mercy here. You've got. Okay, go, go. Get me an equivalent. Is this the same Jesus that was presented before Pilate? Yeah. And he made a very. Um, uh, in fact, it's not even. He was he was presented yeah. before the Sanhedrin. Yeah, that that, that one. Yeah. And he basically said, "He forgave him, yeah? kingdom okay. is not of this world." Okay, so he said that he could have called six. Who is it? Oh, no, no. He could have called legions of angels to destroy all of the people that arrested him, but he didn't. Okay. Because he is noble. He was more compassionate. He was more empathetic and he understands that to progress as a human race, you have to stop fighting. Okay, okay. So let me ask a question. Hold on. Because, no, because okay. you, okay. you, you said Sure. You said That's going to lead us. He's, no, no, he's fallen. Said, he's fallen for it. Because, no, 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 I haven't fallen for anything. Okay, is that, is, that your, is that your response? No, 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 no. Is that your response? I, I, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Is that your response? I haven't finished. Yet. Yeah. Because when you look at, like the question initially was to you was, who is a better example? And who should you trust? It doesn't look like you're winning. No. This question okay. is not good for you. Okay. You've seen that it's, they're trying to come here to uh, Wait, talk about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the worst okay, thing no, they could do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's, can I respond okay, now no, to you no, no, about no, the legions of angels? You said a lot. Can I respond? You said, you said a lot. You said do you want more time? Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, go. On. So I'll with, give you another couple of minutes. With, with the legions of angels. Yeah. Okay. He made a choice, a legitimate choice. He could have wiped out everybody, but he said no. I would trust someone like that. I would follow someone like that. I believe that is a wonderful example. I agree. Jesus is a wonderful, a wonderful example. example. I agree. Now, now, this, this, this example I'm giving you yeah, yeah. is not carnal. Okay. It's not about the passions. Okay. It's not about your flesh, brother. Okay. This is about right. the realm of God, okay. which is the realm can, of the spirit. Can, can I respond now? Almost, almost okay. Okay. This is an immaterial example. Yeah of how we should behave towards our fellow man. Why wouldn't I trust that? Why would I trust the man with respect? He was a statesman. He was a statesman. And I agree, he had influence. But his influence was temporary with respect. If, if that's no, the case, no, no, why are you talking no, no, about him? No, no, no. His influence permeates every word that you say right now. Because you follow him. No, and but, so, no, but so, so, so the influence so, has gotten you to speak about him, right? It's not just temporary, it's so, gone to 2024. So the point I'm making is, why not put your trust in somebody okay. who was perfect? So can I come back and respond now? Almost, almost, almost. Okay. Who was a perfect role model. Okay. And who operated okay. in yeah. the realm of the spirit, okay. not like a carnal person. Okay, my turn. Right. My turn. Sorry, one second. Okay, who, more who time. Was, <laughs> I think we're going to we're gonna have to do this in uh, timing. Uh, okay, grab the time we can time it. All right, so what, what are you saying? How, how long do you want? 30 seconds more? Yeah, give me 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds. Yeah. Ask me for two minutes, then you speak for two minutes. No problem. After that. No problem. All right. So, what we see is an example that is immaterial. Yeah. That is a higher standard than the flesh. Okay. Unfortunately, Muhammad was operating in the flesh. Okay. He was operating through, obviously, carnal desires because one of the seven deadly sins is power. Another one is lust. Right. Another Time's one up. is anger. Okay, if you don't mind. So, so I just wanna, can I respond? Wanna, now? I just want to. Well, you, you said thirty seconds, but okay. you have to be a man of your word. Well, that's, that's, that's you have to be a man of your talking. word now, right? Listen. What is justice? What is it? Like, let's say, for example, let's take the case of Hitler. Hitler killed six million people. Yeah. Okay. Is it just to forgive him? It's not just to forgive him, right? Okay. So you've just given an example of Pilate, and according to him. Here you have a man that's about to kill, from our perspective, a prophet, from his perspective, a god. And he decided not to destroy him. And he does not see that as a miscarriage of justice. If he does see that as a miscarriage of justice, we go into carnal desire, uh, uh, carnal virtue number, cardinal virtue number four, which is justice. The fact that you're saying that your best example of mercy and compassion and forgiveness is when Jesus decided not to destroy Pilate is actually a trap that you fell into because that is an example of miscarriage of justice. It's like letting Hitler off the hook. It's actually much worse than that, according to you, because it's, uh, you've got a man killing God, uh, essentially, and he's being forgiven for it. There's no forgiveness in that. And can you imagine, it's the same Christianity that says if you don't believe Jesus died for your sins, you go to hell forever. But if you, if you, if you, if you want to kill God, you should be forgiven. It seems to me like a, a, a severe contradiction. So here you have it. 
The issue is this, is when you look at all of the virtues, magnanimity, we've made the case, forgiveness, we've made the case, bravery, we've made the case, justice, we've made the case, your version of Jesus Christ is not only unpractical, implausible, no one wants to follow it. I've not met one Christian in the world who has told me, slap me in my right hat face, and then now give me the other one. Would you let me do that? No. Can I slap you? No, 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 no. So why don't you want to follow Jesus? I want to follow Jesus. Can I slap you in the I wanna, face? I want to follow Jesus. Do you Jesus, allow me? But I, do you I, consent? Listen, I don't want the flesh to come out. That's the thing. Sorry. Do you consent? I, no, I don't consent. So why not? I don't, You're following I don't Muhammad. You're following come. Muhammad, not and Jesus. I, and I'll be honest. Why are you following I, I'll Muhammad? I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, why are you following I'm Muhammad? I'm working out my salvation with fair children. Jesus says Sorry. if someone slaps you on the right cheek, Give him the I left. I said that. I told you. I, I know that. It's in the Bible. But what I'm saying you know to where, you, though? sure. Book of Mark, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Book of Mark. What do we show us? I've just, I've just said it. Okay. So in the book of Mark, it says, slap him the right. Give me the left. This man doesn't even want to give me the right. I'm asking him, do you want to follow Muhammad or Jesus? Let's do a test. If you want to follow Jesus today, you want. Let's see if you're a Jesus follower or Muhammad follower. Okay. Muhammad says, don't let do that. Is it, the Quran says, well, jazao, jazao seconds. Seconds. Ten seconds. If someone hits you, hit them like the way they hit you. So do you want to follow Muhammad or Jesus? Okay, good. I can respond to that. Go ahead. Okay, you said two minutes, yeah? Yeah, go on. You're not going to interrupt me, bro. All right, so I just want to show you that verse. So Matthew 26, verse 53. Look what Jesus says. He says, in, in fact, 52, he says, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall pray... Uh, Presently give me more than 12 legions of angels, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So Jesus didn't call the 12,000 of angels to destroy Pilate because of the prophecy. Everything Jesus said, even on the cross, was messianic prophecy. When you look at the person of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he's operating at a higher moral standard. And that's something, Muhammad, that you need to think about. Did Muhammad operate to a high moral standard? The answer is no. Absolutely You've not. You've still got a minute. So we know that because when we look at the passions, the seven deadly sins, with respect, and I'm not trying to be rude, we can see the behavior of the historical Muhammad. You can go to Ibn Ishaq and you can see the character okay. but where show me one person or one book or religious text that gives bad news about the person of the lord jesus christ of Nazareth. who did he kill after a war an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth someone's gonna die look at israel and palestine someone is gonna die some babies will die after all, a bomb is not discriminatory. A bomb is not selective from either side. Children are going to die. So the point I'm making is when Time's you... Time's up. No, I haven't... No, no. I, it's two minutes. No, no, no. I've got, probably got about 30 seconds. No, you, you don't. You haven't been timing, bro. Okay, just for that, you're not going to get any more from me. Okay. Just for but, that. Just for that. Brother, you if you're going to... You're accused me of lying. You're walking away. It's two minutes, and then you're saying, no, nah, no. Nah. I've so timed it on my watch. You timed I've timed it. Okay, you're saying so no. Let's see. What do you mean, let's see? I'm not going to show you nothing. Go and check it when you go home. It's a two minutes. You're accusing me of lying. I'm not accusing you of lying. Okay, so what I think then? it was more than that. So why don't you time it yourself and find out? Okay. I had a look before I started. Okay. okay. I had a look before I started. Okay. Wallahi, it was two minutes. Okay. No problem. You say it's two minutes. Yeah. Let's so continue. Let's continue. I'm going to speak for two minutes. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, I leave. What are you saying? Listen. Up to you. Don't, you don't need to make it. No, no, no. Don't, don't come and say that. No, this, this was off of the record. You'll see that you were talking for two minutes. Fine. No problem. If I'm talking for two minutes, I thought it was short than that. You were talking for two minutes. I thought it was short than that. But no problem. Okay. I'm happy to. All right, cool. Two minutes. Go ahead. We have started off. He started off by saying, let's make a comparison between Jesus and Muhammad. Okay, so Asalam. We've looked at the New Testament and we've looked at what we say are the virtues that everyone accepts. Things like bravery, magnanimity, forgiveness, and justice. On those four points alone, we don't even need to go into other ones. We have found time after time again that there is more evidence in the Sirah Nabawiyah that he mentioned, uh, uh, Ibn Ishaq or Ibn Hisham or whoever you like, that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was more brave according to than the New Testament narrative of Jesus. He was more just according to that. He was more 
uh, forgiving because he had more potential to be forgiving because he was a statesman. We've already made the case. Now he keeps making an assertion that, oh well, you have to follow the high character. There's a difference between making an assertion and giving the evidence. Right now we have compared the evidence and your assertion has fallen flat on its face. Now I'm going to repeat the, the, the points. On these four, we don't even need to go into anymore. Show me an example that indicates the bravery of the New Testament narrative of Jesus, more so than 19 wars, being on the front line, never running away, number one. Number two, which indicates forgiveness more than being a statesman and historically going into a place and forgiving the people. Number three, justice, the like of which if anything happens, which is negative, that the person is recompensed with it, with a, with a whole system called Sharia law, and which indicates forgiveness and which indicates uh, magnanimity the way I've just showed you as well. These are four virtues. You have been incapable of showing from your New Testament narrative any of that stuff. I'm going to give you one more chance to do so. If you are incapable of doing so, then the challenge that you originally came to me with is one that has been squarely lost by you. You have to go home and reassess your religion, reassess your arguments, reassess what your version of Jesus Christ is, reassess what... And I asked him, would you accept... I've got two seconds. So go ahead and ask, answer. No, I don't need more seconds. Go. Two minutes. Okay, so... Your definition of brave, and my point is this, Mohammed, is with respect, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but your definition of brave is a very carnal one. It's one that is not of a higher moral standard. So when I look at Matthew 26, verse 27, we can see Jesus took punishment for you. He took punishment for everyone standing here. Look what it says. In verse 27, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, gathered him, the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. In verse 29 of Matthew 27, and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Verse 30, and they spit on him, upon him, and they took the, the reed and they smote him on the head. Now, someone who is a man, he took all of that and he said, you know what? He walked away like it was nothing. He rose again the third day. Someone spitting on me as just, just to say I'm not even a Christian. Someone spit on me. I'm more likely to try and knock them out and try and fight them. I'm more likely to try to do that in the flesh. That's the flesh. But Jesus, right? Jesus, he showed a courage that God said as prophesied in the Old Testament. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's not us that should be repaid, but it's God who's going to repay. That's why on Judgment Day, Muhammad, God is going to ask some questions to you. When Time's that, up. When that person... Time's just, up. Can I just finish this last No, one? no, you can't. No, no, let me just finish this. It doesn't make sense. Time's up, two minutes. It doesn't make sense. You, you okay. have to be a man of your word. Okay. Uh, but anyway, let me stop. Fine. I'll give you, out of my courtesy, five seconds. Go ahead, please, bro. On Judgment Day, God's going to ask you that question. All right, cool. In Judgment Day, according to the Bible in the New Testament, Jesus is going to come back. And what's he going to do to the prostitute? He's going to annihilate the prostitute. What's he going to do? He's going to come back in vengeance. In the book of Revelation, it's mentioned. What's he going to do? Every, every knee shall bow and this and that. Well, the thing is, if you compare, and that's another point of comparison here. We also talk about forgiveness. Compare when Jesus is in power to when Muhammad Sallallahu was in power. Huh? When he comes back, what's Jesus going to do? He was being whipped, according to your narrative, as a God that's meant to be all powerful, meant to control the universe, being whipped by a human being who's being unjust and this God couldn't even bring back justice to the world. Right, you're, you're, so here we have another virtue of, of strength, uh, another one of God's attributes, which he cannot manifest. You're telling me that's an argument for Jesus being God or for, for him being the Messiah or anything else? That's not an argument for anything. I'm sorry to say. It doesn't indicate he's brave. It doesn't indicate he's strong. It actually indicates he's vulnerable and weak. And if he's meant to be a god, then why is he getting whipped? When he comes back on the day of judgment, he mentioned the day of judgment. Read the book of Revelation. Google it in your own time. What will Jesus do when he comes back? What will he do to the prostitute and destroyer and killer Jezebel? What will he do? 
just research it in your own time, you realize that indicates a lack of forgiveness, the like of which you've been trying to say that he exhibits in the New Testament narrative. I'm sorry to say, you have failed. You have failed in every count. You have squarely failed. You, every single thing that you tried to do in comparison with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been an absolute shambolic failure, the like of which I've actually embarrassed on your behalf to, to, to say. I think you need to go home and you need to reassess if you truly believe in Jesus. And that's why I asked him, you believe that getting slapped in the, in the, in the right cheek, giving the left? I said, let me slap you. Let me slap you. Let me do what the Bible says. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want it because he wants to follow Muhammad and the justice of Muhammad, the practicality of Muhammad, rather than the idealism of Jesus according to the New Testament. Okay, so firstly, firstly, Muhammad, I'm actually embarrassed for you. He asked for two seconds. I'm actually embarrassed for you because your appeal of bravery for Muhammad, right, is a very carnal one. It's not, it's not high enough. So it's for you to make this point, oh, okay, well, it's okay to fight, it's okay to go to war, um, it's okay to be a statement, it's okay to lust for power. This is exactly why we have the conflict between Israel and Palestine. To, to, to stand there and promote this idea that fighting okay, is okay, I'm not being rude, but you should be ashamed of yourself. That is an absolute disgrace. People are dying, bro. People are, people are fighting for stupid reasons. Kids, families losing their lives. Why would you advocate this? You're saying I failed miserably. You have not appealed to a higher moral standard, firstly. Second of all, you haven't quoted one scripture in the Bible. You haven't given me the book, the chapter, or the verse. But what's interesting is, I did that. I did that. So if you don't mind, why don't you do that? Why don't you back up what you're saying with evidence? Because as far as I know, Jesus is in heaven. Muhammad is not. So who even, who is in glory right now? That's the thing. Let's be honest, because as you can see in the book of Revelation, Christ comes back and he sits on the throne. Revelation chapter 4, Revelation 22. He sits on the throne. In fact, John, when he saw Jesus, he fell down as dead. So, and, I, and, I, and I'm not trying to be rude, but it's an absolute disgrace Time's up. to say that Time's up, I failed. Time's up. Okay. <laughs> it's an absolute disgrace to say that he failed. Okay. Look, now he's just using superlatives and adjectives for the sake of it. And I'm quite flattered that you're using the same superlatives and adjectives I've used. I said, I feel embarrassed on your behalf. You use exactly the same phraseology that I use. Look, I, it's, it's good to see someone learning on the spot. I will say, what I will say to you is that since, since this is going back and forth in a way that I don't think we're, you're, you're saying anything new now, I'm not saying anything new, I'm going to make this my last two minutes. And what I'm going to say to you I is... Get one, I get last two minutes. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be done by that. You can speak to the cameras, of course okay, you can. So, hey, so, let me finish, let me finish. But you're going to be let me finish, let me, let me finish, let me finish. Otherwise, we might as well end Let me finish. Because if, okay. if you're not going to okay, be... Okay, no, because fine. if you're not going to be here. around for my last no, two minutes... No, no problem. But it's a respect Thank you. Conversation. Thank you. Good talking to you. Good seeing you. All right, guys. Let's go to the next one. Oh, sure. I'll keep him on.